Welcome to our Baseball America Hot Stove Show 2021. I'm Keith Avalon from Play Games. Sam is uh, running the controls tonight. I just sw- swallowed my tea wrong, so my voice is going to like, ah! Well, I was just going to make do here. This happened like 20 seconds ago, so this is the way it works with live web streaming. Hopefully it'll come back to me as I <clears throat> speak more. Okay. So, we're going to talk about the 2021 Baseball America season for History Maker Baseball Big League Baseball game. It will be released on uh, March 26th, and we have a special <clears throat> package deal for you that we're going to t- talk about at the, at the end of the show, but it does involve the cool graphic that we used uh, f- to promote the show. In fact, why don't you bring that graphic up on the screen, if you would, Sam? The gra- yeah, the, the uh, graphic of the... Yeah, the shirt graphic. We're going to talk about the shirt. So we, we made this, we, we, we like this graphic so well <clears throat> that we made a shirt out of it. And we're going to, we're going to package this shirt uh, along with the Baseball America card set. So if, you, if you're a Baseball America fan and, uh, you know, I, I, I saw that and I thought, that is awesome. I have to have one. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, make, I, and I, fe- I figured like if I feel that way, then other people will feel that way too. So we have a special package deal where you can get the shirt and the baseball card set and get them both before the general release of the card set. Uh, but we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Right, now let's talk about uh, Baseball America 2021. Um, so uh, movers and shakers, we, we've been, you know, we've been doing Baseball America now for, this is the ninth season. Uh, and uh, actually, there's been quite a bit of player turnover. I was just going over the uh, the uh, all-time Baseball America roster a couple of days ago, and uh, I believe you know it's uh, six, seven hundred players now, something like that. Um, as as a as an aside, parenthetically, I think we're going to do a Baseball America Hall of Fame. Uh, we were talking about this uh, off the air uh, about how we could have like people vote for their you know favorite players who should be in the inaugural class for the uh, Baseball America Hall of Fame. But uh, anyway, I, I'm getting sidetracked. We'll talk about that also later on. Uh, but yes, the Baseball America has been going on for nine years now. And each year there's some player movement. Uh, and some players retire. Some players come into the league. Uh, some players you know, see their careers kind of plateau. Some see them take off. It's, it's like real baseball, but with uh, our, own, our very own universe of uh, Baseball America players. So just kind of the, hitting the highlights of what happened this offseason, uh, Doug Rossello, who uh, has kind of been a fixture on the front page of the Baseball America set because he's like always played with Team One and he's the catcher, so he's like the first player you see or one of the first players. Anyway, his contract was not renewed after eight seasons with Team One and uh, he is a free agent this year. Uh, Casey Carter and Romero Yadier, also longtime stars who were released for salary reasons. Uh, Alvaro Morgan got a big dollar deal, uh, moving from Team 7 to Team 8. Matt Hoopstack is no longer with Team 3. He is uh, signed with Team 12 this year. Uh, and, and there are a number of other player moves that we'll talk about we'll go, as we go team by team. We're going to give you a, a team by team update uh, and try to keep this under an hour uh, so you can get an idea who's on what team and, and what to expect from each team. Uh, among the players retiring after the 2020 season, Reggie Horner, Wade Allen, uh, Rondell Frazier, and Lauren Baines. A number of players uh, who were on 2020 teams did not land roster spots in 2021, including Mike Vesberg, Freddie Geronimo, Vance Hume, Alex Moreno, uh, John Boudreaux, Mickey Lyons, and, and many others. So uh, those are some of the, the like the high-level overview of the league. Let's go team by team and show you, you know, what's going on in Baseball America 2021. We'll start with Team 1, which is kind of... Uh, I'm going to try to keep the uh, these synopses to like two or three minutes so that we can finish all 12 teams in the space of about a half hour or so. So uh, bear with me if I don't, uh, you know, if I don't go too much in depth on your favorite team. So start with Team 1. Uh, Corbin Young is... Uh, is like the star player, Doug Rossella. As I mentioned, Doug Rossella's contract is not renewed after eight seasons. Uh, Dom Tazi is the new catcher. Let's see if I got his card here. Yeah, there he is. Uh, Semi Slugger, Home Run King, Eager, and Whiffer. He will take over as catcher for Team One. Uh, Corbin Young, of course, the uh, one of the better players, one of the best players in, in all of Baseball America. You can see cha- Semi Champion, Semi Heroes, Slugger, Semi Home Run King, also Semi Active. So he's the big wheel. For Team One, but they've got a lot of other great players too. Um, probably 
uh, team one had the most stable roster of all the league over the course of the off season. Uh, so you got you know guys like uh, Dexter Ford, Porfirio Conti, with his gold fielding rating. I mentioned Dom Tazi. There's Nick Griffiths, who's not going to have his best season, but still a solid contributor. Uh, rookie player for uh, Team One is uh, catcher Austin McWhorter, who will back up Dom Tazi. Uh, they're going to develop him uh, as you know as, as his career unwinds. Uh, leading the way for uh, Team One, Brad Bonus Fernando De La Rosa, of course, is uh, you know the well-known pitcher for the team based on Steve Towers' uh, after further review. His career is kind of in a little bit of a decline. He is semi-star, double flash, and semi-control. Uh, but Brad Bonus is kind of the, uh, the uh, ace of the, uh, of the Team 1 uh, pitching staff with his star, flash, and double control. After that, though, the Team 1 pitching staff gets a little bit uh, thin. Uh, looks like rookie Jackie Fly is going to get a position in the, in the starting rotation, even though he's a semi-struggler. Double flash with control, also active as a runner. He's a rookie, and Jeff Stillings will probably be the other pitcher. Uh, the uh, bullpen, pretty solid, anchored by Burke Brewer, a star flash control. They also have Park Sung Yang uh, and Justin Beckwell amongst the other uh, players in the bullpen. So this is a good team. Uh, two good pitchers in Bonus and Fernando. Uh, some question marks after that. Uh, but I would say veteran stability puts them in the conversation for the pennant, despite question marks in the starting rotation. I think this team uh, could be could be one of the contenders there at the end of the season. Going to Team 2. Last year they were a basement dweller. This team made some very solid uh, roster moves in the offseason, acquiring some good young players. Um, the big buzz is Matt LaMonico, the beefy third baseman. Semi slugger, home run king, uh, kind of kind of came out of nowhere. He was a he was a zero a zero player last year, uh, a, a free agent extra, uh, and he's uh, really come on. Semi gold uh, will be an the anchor of the infield for Team Two, but they've also got some other good players too. Um, got uh, catcher Gaylord Elsner has got some uh, some good power. There's uh, Jorge Cosme, who semi champion, semi hero, semi slugger, and a double active runner. He'll be uh, burning up the base paths. Of course, Johnny Fortune, our uh, poster boy for Baseball America, uh, he's had better cards, but it's still pretty solid, and he'll add uh, you know, some, some heft to the uh, batting order of Team 2. And there's Paxton Friel, of course, Pedro Gallardo with his gold glove, uh, rounding out the, uh, you know, the uh, big stars of, the, of Team 2's uh, uh, infield and outfield. On the pitching staff, um, they got an entirely new pitching rotation for Team 2. The only holdover is this guy, Angel Zero Neal, uh, who is a semi-star. Not horribly impressive, uh, but they traded for Melito Ortiz and also Kirk Muzon from uh, Team 5. So he's going to, looks like, anchor the uh, pitching staff. Semi-ace, double flash, semi-control. They've also got uh, rookie Rex Fabre, who uh, has got maybe a little bit of con control issues. Not, not particularly good. At control, but uh, double flash. He's got that heater going. He's a rookie, and Jeff Ducat also in the uh, starting rotation. So that's a, that's a pretty good starting, you know, uh, starting rotation of Zeromillo, uh, Ortiz, Fabre, and Ducat. And the uh, the uh, bullpen is pretty strong too. F Felix B Biancolana, who's been a long time uh, bullpen star for Baseball America, will be back for more. But then we also have Truman Kenwire, uh, Sergio Colorado, who's got double flash and double control. Uh, Mike Brusca, so a pretty, a, a pretty solid and pretty deep bullpen. So uh, team two, I think, uh, should be vastly improved over last year. Uh, you know, and, and, and could be in the in the thick of things as the pennant race heats up. Uh, let's look at team three. Last year they were a pennant contender, if not uh, the Baseball America favorite. Uh, this year, um, could be a different story. They've got Jason Marachka, who. Uh, will bring his big bat to Team 3. They got, uh, you know, a core of veteran players uh, returns, uh, along with Jason Marachka, who was acquired from Team 11. He's like their big free agent pickup. Uh, but we got Pauly Potus, is how I would like to pronounce that. Uh, Corey Shorter, a uh, couple, of, couple, couple of the uh, Baseball America's bigger stars, uh, both you know, are going to be great hitting again. They've got a rookie uh, 
third baseman, uh, Pat Mattis, who also looks pretty good. And a pitching staff that uh, features Charlie Guerrero, who had that big comeback a couple of years ago. He's still got some uh, energy left in that arm. But aside from Guerrero, uh, the rest of the pitching staff is not looking great. They've got Jorge da uh, Jose Davalos, who uh, uh, is uh, uh, as, as much a threat with his bat as, as he is with his arm, although this year his uh, pitching strength looks to have declined a little bit. Uh, they picked up Chico Loya from, um, let's see what team was it from, they, ten, Team 10, he was released by Team 10, he's 40 years old, uh, and as you can see, he's a semi-struggler, double flash, so, uh, you know, he, he's having some issues getting the ball over the plate, but uh, showed enough for Team 3 to sign him, and he looks like he's going to be in the starting rotation. It's going to be these five guys, Hefner, Guerrero, Davalos, Loya, and Raleigh Dietrich, none of them, aside from Guerrero, is particularly strong. So the pitching staff is going to be the, the weak point for Team 3. Um, so most likely uh, a significant dip for uh, Team 3 in the standings based on the uh, strength of the, uh, or the lack of strength in the uh, starting rotation. Let's look at Team 4. Last year Team 4 was kind of a middle-of-the-pack sort of club. And uh, Pretty good uh, one-two punch again this year in the bullpen with uh, the heat seeker, Todd Hampa, relief pitcher extraordinaire, earning that uh, multi-million dollar contract. A-star flash, semi-control this year. They also have Chick Schramm, who uh, is another one of the uh, uh, Baseball America top relievers. They acquired him uh, in kind of a, kind of a head-scratcher. Um, they acquired Hampa, I should say. They had Chick Schramm. Todd Hampa was acquired from Team 5. And that was where the kind of, you know, did, do they know something? Why, why would we pick up another strong reliever? So we may see some movement here before the start of the season with one of those two players. Most likely be Chick Schramm, if either of them. Starting pitching is, uh, they also have some, some other strong relief pitchers. Harvey Nixon, Clint Westner. Pretty strong, pretty strong bullpen for Team 4. Maybe best in the in Baseball America. Problem is, their their starting uh, lineup is not so great. We got Max Murphy, who's a semi-star with double control. Uh, then we got Goolsby, Nelson Moore, and uh, Cody Brecky. That's sort of the they penciled in as the starting rotation. None of them, aside from Murphy, is particularly strong. So on the one hand, if and when they falter, they got a great uh, bullpen to go to. But uh, the, the question is, you know, how how soon can you get to the bullpen? And how often can you use it? Uh, as far as the, the uh, fielding goes and the batting, Trevor Boston, well-known name for uh, Baseball America. Ricky Guerra. They've got some big names. Kent Bruner, big hitting second baseman. Uh, they did pick up Casey Carter, uh, signed uh, as kind of a mentor to uh, the youngster Bernie Cronister. He may see more playing time, though, than, uh, than Cronister, Cronister does. Um, so, and the, the big rookie uh, for, for Team 4 is Horace Runyon, uh, an outfielder. Uh, not much with the bat yet, but he's semi-active, uh, and uh, they've got high hopes for him to uh, be a, a, a franchise-type player down the road. So, all in all, it uh, feels like we might see some movement uh, before the, uh, the season begins on the uh, pitching staff for Team 4, the, the bullpen anyway. Uh, maybe to get a little offensive help or maybe a little speed. Otherwise, uh, there might not be enough games to save to warrant two big money relief pitchers on Team 4. All right, Team 5. I'm going to flip my notes here. Last year, Team 5 was kind of a middle-of-the-pack sort of team. Uh, this year, they've got, uh, they're have got they making some, some making some moves. they got some, some good young players, uh, especially rookie Winston Numbers, who is uh, going to have, looks like, a, a terrific season, uh, both in base running and fielding. And also uh, pretty solid with the bat. Um, aside from him, um, you get some pretty good heft in the, in the batting order. You got Ricky Roynell, well known. Uh, I mean, look at this lineup here. In the heart of, the, of Team 5's lineup, you got Ricky Roynell, Steve Van Gorder, and Price Dow. You know, champion, champion, uh, semi hero, but you got all kinds of power and average. Uh, they're not fast, but they can definitely uh, create some, some extra bases. Uh, to back up numbers, who's got the speed? Uh, pitching is is pretty solid too. 
Um, they got Nick Gilmer, who they picked up from Team 2. Kind of a, a, a younger prospect. Uh, looks like uh, on the poised for, for a big year. Uh, elsewhere, they got Francisco Torres and Brent Carlin and Donnie Lee Gross as their most likely uh, starting rotation. Again, Gross being the bottom at a, a semi-star. This looks like a pretty solid pitching staff for uh, Team 5. The bullpen is not particularly overpowering. It's, it's very deep, though. Chad Kester is the star. He's ace-star flash control. Got Mert Marcel, who's semi-ace. And then a number of guys like Sid Romer, who are, you know, kind of uh, journeymen. You know, they've got, they've got uh, of course, Romer's double flash, double control, only a star uh, in relief. Uh, but they got a, a number of, of, of uh, relievers that are like that, who are uh, strong but not necessarily overpowering. So a very solid bullpen, a great pitching staff, uh, some pretty solid power and speed in the heart of the order. So uh, Team 5, I think uh, everything's in place to make a strong challenge for the pennants. Team 6, last year another middle-of-the-pack club, back with most, uh, mostly the same players. Um, I would say uh, probably the troubling signs from uh, Team 6's Grapefruit League camp, a uh, number of key players just not looking that sharp. Early on, you got a lot, I mean, some very well-known players: Mike St. Clair, Alex Imbrogno, Shane Sasser. All these guys have had you know career years in the past, uh, but none of them are showing too much this year. Alex Imbrogno, Mike St. Clair, both iron fielding this year. That could be problematic. One guy who is doing well, however, is Manny Facero, their middle infielder. He may uh, move around from shortstop to second base as the course of the, of the year uh, as the year unfolds. Hero Slugger, home run, semi home run king, also semi active on the base path. He's definitely the guy that uh, they want to see a lot of for Team Six. Um, best pitching for Team Six is in the bullpen. We got uh, Yosu Blanco and uh, Ki Kawakami. Uh, both of them more than capable and uh, definitely the kind of guys you want to depend on uh, when the game's on the line. Uh, problem, however, is that the uh, that's the best pitching. The starters, you know, they've, they've got some some name power, but nothing to really to back it up. Wally Ballard, who's had some pretty good years in the past in Baseball America, not showing too much this year. Sean Mazeo, uh, Felipe Soto, and uh, Spencer Spiegel. That looks to be the starting. Well, I guess I guess Kelly Whitehouse is the top uh, performer, semi star, but also semi wild, and a semi prospect. So you can see it's a very young staff. Prospects, the veteran is Wally Ballard, who's probably, I guess, going to anchor the staff, uh, you know, moving ahead. So probably uh, th this team is not going to make a lot of noise in the uh, championship race. Uh, probably bottom half of the uh, standings for Team 6. A little bit of a decline from last year. Team 7. Last year was a strong contender from the Baseball America. Uh, this year... Uh, Group of solid players. No superstars. Probably closest to the superstar caliber would be Remy Cardoso, their third baseman. Uh, Semi-champion, semi-slugger, semi-home run king. Uh, should be, uh, you know, uh, high up on the on the fan ballots for the All-Star game. Um, but they've got some other, other players good to, is, who are good as well. Mickey Pettis, uh, you know, guys like Bud Law, you know, Grant Eagle, um, Steve Farrell. None of these guys... Are, are particularly you know overpowering. They're not superstar caliber, but they're solid. Uh, I don't see any iron here. Uh, they're all decent base runners. We got some good good power, good average. Eusebio Felix, gold uh, second baseman. Not much with the bat, but can provide some defense. And the pitching's not not too bad. You got Paul Fiala, who's uh, the leader of the of the rotation, and Ross Berrigan, uh, who. Uh, both of whom were with the club last year. Kirby Colston uh, was picked up from Team 10, and uh, th that's the core of their of their starting lineup. Again, it's not too bad. Star, semi-star, star. Colston with double flash, so they should have a pretty decent pitching rotation. Uh, bullpen is possibly problematic. They've got a hotshot rookie, Donnie Daigle, who's semi-ace, double flash, uh, but a prospect. Danny Deligio is the, is the next best reliever. Uh, and beyond them, you know, 
I don't want to say mediocre, but just nothing special. So the Achilles heel for Team 7 is going to be the bullpen. I would say modest winning season is certainly, you know, achievable for Team 7, uh, but only if the pitching holds up. Um, would not expect them to be contending for the title, but they could, they could you know, do some, do some damage, uh, you know, down the pennant race uh, in terms of, uh, you know, maybe knocking other teams out. Team 8. Uh, last year they were the top third of the standings. Uh, this year, um, first thing you notice about this team is that it's an older team. you got Todd Sargent, you got Mike Kettle, power hitter, uh, one of the home run, one of the Baseball America's home run leaders, career home run leaders, Vince Harrison, Junior Ayala. You got, you know, these guys are all icons. Uh, so it's an older team. They did, they did spend big money to get Alvaro Morgan, another older player. Uh, the question mark is, you know, is he going to be able to produce? Um, also, Travis Harvey uh, has had some uh, spring training issues. Am I getting the, Yeah, here we go. Uh, iron uh, fielding this year, but he is semi-champion, hero, semi-slugger, and patient. So he'll get on base a lot, and hopefully his uh, fielding won't be too much of a liability for Team 8. The bullpen is, uh, oh, and we've got Kogi Hirota, who's uh, you know one of the better shortstops in the league. Uh, oh, and rookie, Luke Howard, who uh, is going to probably have trouble finding a place to play He's rated semi-gold. Uh, again, not too much of a, of a, of a batter, but uh, he is fast on the base paths and with the gold glove. So a nice assortment of players here. Uh, a little bit old, a little bit slow. Um, the relief staff starts with Julio Jose, one of the top relievers in Baseball America. Ace, double flash, double control. Brent Rothermel is also uh, on the in, in the bullpen. But, the, but beyond them, it's fairly... Uh, Fairly vanilla, and the pitching staff is nothing to write home about either. You got Wildredo DiZallo, who had a sensational year uh, two years ago. Uh, this year, though, he's struggling with arm trouble. We've given him a kind of a unique rating. He's rated star, semi struggler, double flash. So sometimes he's going to, you know, get in a groove, and other times he's just going to be unable to get an out, uh, which should prove for an interesting season uh, for Wildredo DiZallo. Robbie Pulaski is the next best pitcher. They also have Nico Valle and uh, Christian Mercado. So not a great pitching staff. Decent relief, though. I mean, stellar relief uh, at the top of the bullpen. Deeper in, though, it gets a little bit uh, less impressive for Team 8. So, uh, you know, final word for Team 8. Age, bad pitching. Bad starting pitching, you know, hard to see this team with a winning record at the end of uh, 2021. Moving on to Team 9. Uh, this team has some choices to make with its starting lineup, although I think the choice really is, is, is fairly obvious. They can go with speed and fielding or offense and errors uh, to, to, to overgeneralize. So we've got guys like LJ Cron, Lamont Clark, uh, Tito Valenzuela, uh, Val Tito Valenza, I'm sorry, uh, Manny Infante, all these guys, fast, semi-active, active, semi-active, semi neutral, uh, gold, gold, gold. Uh, batting, you know, LJ Cron is pretty solid with the semi-champion, but the rest of them are, you know, uh, bordering on, uh, on average uh, or worse. So, uh, you know, you go with speed and you go with fielding, or, you know, you can play guys like, you know, Barry Grubb, their best hitter, is also their, uh, you know, their worst fielder, your catcher Bob. Um, I said Barry Grubb, Bobby Grubb, who was a semi-slugger, semi-home run king. He's got a big bat, but he's got an iron, semi-iron glove. Uh, you can play Bill Hemond. You know, he's, he brings some, some heft and some average, but he too is iron. So, uh, you know, you you kind of got a choice: light hitting and good fielding, or poor fielding and and, and solid hitting. But I think really the answer is going to be the fielding and, and the. Uh, Speed because this team's got a, a tremendous pitching staff, uh, and I think they can win. They can win a lot of those two to one games. C.J. Shockey, the top candidate, uh, probably the, the anchor of the of the uh, starting staff. You got Steve Show, who has had some amazing seasons. Uh, then Hippolito Amato, 
and Turner Marshall. Both these guys, Marshall and Show, been around for a long time. Uh, so super solid in the starting rotation. Um, bullpen is okay. Goose Clark is, uh, is, is pretty solid. We got uh, Uniel Encarnacion and Reed Kilmer. These three guys, I think, have enough, uh, you know, enough juice between them to, to uh, pick up the slack for the rare times when the starting uh, staff, you know, d doesn't have it. Uh, so I see good things for Team Nine. No reason why this team can't be a, uh, a pennant winner in 2021. Moving along to Team Ten. Last year they were a cellar dweller. This year. Probably the same thing. Youth movement is in full swing with Team 10. We've got four rookies on the team. Rookie catcher Homer Fowler, uh, who's uh, got some power, but got a lot to learn behind the plate. Malcolm DeRazio, another outfielder, who's uh, got some speed. Bobby Brzezowski, first baseman, big hitting first baseman, but again, uh, not so proficient with the glove, big with the bat. And... Uh, Relief pitcher Archie McCoy, who uh, has has heat, got you know, has got a lot of uh, power behind his pitching, but not always the best control. These are all four rookies, more more rookies than any other team in Baseball America for 2021. They also have Glenn McGoldrick, who was a rookie last year. He'll be starting at second base. Now, to kind of temper all these guys, they picked up uh, Romero Yadier uh, from Team Four. Um, to kind of you know to kind of mentor these guys and and uh, you know give them some sage veteran advice, and kind of almost as a, a player coach. Although he's got some got some pretty good uh, batting uh, abilities, we'll see him on the field quite a bit. Um, on the mound, they got Xavier Colon, who's a, a well-known name in Baseball America. Got it. Looks like another good season for uh, Colon. And uh, after him, though, there's the the, the drop off is. Rather sharp, Sasha Matsunaga, Steve Hubbard is 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 strong. Um, I guess it's actually not so bad for these guys. They've got, they've got uh, these three guys. Matsunaga is not particularly great. I mean, all, all in all, looking at this as a as a big picture, it's not horrible, but it's certainly not you know probably middle of the pack in terms of Baseball America overall ability. The uh, relief staff uh, got some problems. Reese Bonnenberger is the best. Of the bunch, Star Flash Control, everybody else, I don't think you even want to look at them. <laughs> Bobby Chang is uh, not looking good. Adam Gorman, it's 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 not a pretty sight beyond Bonneberger. So, uh, a very mediocre starting staff, backed up with a uh, problematic bullpen, and a bunch of young players uh, in the field will probably add up to another uh, cellar-dwelling season for Team 10. Give the kids some game time. Look ahead to 2022 if you're a Team 10 fan. Team 11 last year was uh, top half of the standings. Fairly stable roster for Team 11. Could pay off with some wins this year. On offense, they got some speed and some uh, on-base percentage. Sean Scalzi, Seth Ranieri, Greg Do Dollywall, who they picked up from uh, team four, they traded Heath ba uh, Heath Bedecker for uh, Dolly Wall. I think they got the best end of that deal. So these guys are kind of the heart of the uh, Team Eleven offense. Dallas Autry provides uh, some oomph, and also uh, you know probably overall the best catcher in Baseball America. He's got the Gold Glove. He's got a big bat, so uh, they'll be leaning on him to produce. Um, Miguel Ruelas, a Gold third baseman, maybe the you know the top third baseman in the league. Um, pitching is good enough. Tr Trini Pimentel, who's uh, an ace this year with double control, he's going to win a lot of games. they got Fumi Suzuki, who is uh, also well-known in Baseball America. He's pretty, very consistent. Uh, uh, he's got double control, semi-star, semi-flash. Yeah, the bullpen is anchored by Steve Radishinsky, who's uh, ace-star flash control this year. And uh, behind him is uh, Madison Geff. These four guys are going to be leaned on heavily for Team 11. Um, beyond Behind them is not a great amount of, of depth, but, you know, serviceable. Uh, we'll call this team a contender uh, as the, they look pretty good on paper. 
but they are kind of lacking the star power uh, of other clubs. And uh, they've got, they got a lot of pretty good players. Sometimes pretty good wins a lot of ball games. Uh, so we'll put them as a contender. Top third of the standings projected for Team 11. And Team 12, last year Team 12 was in the top half of the standings. Uh, good news is they've got the, the uh, Baseball America's best player in Josh Bell, center fielder. Semi-champion, slugger, semi-home run king, semi-patient. He's active runner. He's a gold fielder. He does it all. He is the man. Uh, just signed a big contract renewal for Team 12, so best player is under contract. Uh, they also picked up uh, hotshot youngster Flippy Khalil in a deal with Team 6. And there he is wearing uh, a new jersey, Team 12's jersey this year, Matt Hoopstack. Uh, who's had a long and illustrious career. All three of these guys are gold fielders, so that's solid. Uh, and uh, Khalil and Bell are both active, so there's, they got some speed, they got fielding, they got batting. They, you know, with these three guys, they got a great core. The bad news is the pitching is in disarray, to say the least. Gus Groover is the star of the of the rotation. And then following him is Sonny Haskins, who. Uh, has had his ups and downs in Baseball America. Uh, this will be one of those, I don't know if you'd call this a, I guess it's, he's trending down, but uh, you know, Double Flash will uh, get, get some outs for you. Carmen Oliveira is uh, leading the, the bullpen. He's pretty good. They also have Tino Rodriguez. Uh, but not a lot of, uh, not a lot of control in, on, on, the, on the pitching staff as a whole, and not a lot of depth. So uh, I would say not looking great for Team 12 in 2021 could be a precipitous drop in the standings. Let's take a quick look at the extras players. The cart set comes with uh, a, a set of uh, about three dozen extra players. Just we won't look at them all, just to hit the highlights of who's in here. Of course, leading the pack is Doug Rossello, who uh, we've seen at the uh, first page of the uh, Baseball America card set for many, many years. He is available can be signed to any team. Fort Sprouse, another one of those guys that's kind of hung around for a long time, uh, mainly known for his fielding. Jim Kemper probably should have retired. He may retire after this year, but he wanted to give it one last shot, maybe latch on with somebody. Jonathan Bales is uh, a promising rookie outfielder. Got some uh, batting ability, needs to work on his fielding, also some speed. Uh, and the pitching side of it, we've got Gary Rensler, who's had, who's had some good seasons in Baseball America over the years. Uh, Luis Orozco, probably the two, the two uh, best starting pitchers available. Rocco Valenti has had uh, some off-season arm issues. Uh, he has uh, also got that unusual rating of semi-ace and struggler, uh, which will drive a manager crazy, uh, but he is available. And he's an icon, so he's got that experience going for him. Rogelio Perez is one of the top rookies uh, in terms of relief pitching. Um, nothing special this year, but uh, you know, give him give him a shot. May wind up uh, developing into the next big star. So those are the highlights of uh, the free agent section of the 2021 card set. So the favorites for 2021 uh, teams one and five. Uh, with teams 2, 9, and 11 having their opportunities, uh, team 6, 10, and 12 look to be struggling at best. Well, I guess uh, promising, hopeful at best, struggling at worst. Possibly long seasons ahead for teams 6, 10, and 11. So, as I mentioned, Baseball America will be released on March 26th. You'll get over 300 players in the set, uh, all the 12 teams, uh, 24 players on each team, plus a collection of free agents and rookies that are unsigned, you can assign them to whoever you want or, or make a 13th team out of if you want. Uh, also ballpark and umpire cards and a season summary with the instant results, winning percentages provided for you so you can uh, you know, play your team and quick play the other games and have a you know, real life pennant race. Uh, I mentioned the, our t-shirt offer, the special offer for Baseball America fans. Uh, we created the, the cool shirt that we showed you. Want to bring that back up again? Yep. Uh, with the Johnny Fortune graphic that we used for the show. It's Johnny Fortune there on the cover of the shirt. He's autographed it, as you can see. Uh, and uh, we thought, well, let's package the t-shirt with the cards at a special deal, and we'll, and we'll send you the cards with the t-shirt before the official release date. So uh, we're going to put this up, make it available starting tonight, for, and for the next week. It's available right now. 
it's available right now. You can you can uh, punch the uh, the uh, the click button right now, uh, and we'll have it available for the next week or so. At that time, we'll close it off. We'll uh, submit the order, get the T-shirts, and then we'll mail you the shirt and the uh, card set uh, on or about March eighth, and that should get it to you with about a week, ten days ahead of time of the actual release date of the card set. For everybody else that uh, you know, if you, we, we'll have the shirts available after. Uh, the release of the card set on the 26th. Card set's $24. The t-shirt will be $24. $24. So uh, you can save 9 bucks by ordering them both together. Uh, and again, you can just click and get to the site, uh, get to the page on the site uh, starting right now. They're up for pre-order right now. They're up for pre-order right now. Yes, we won't be shipping them right now. We'll be shipping them on March, on or about March 8th. Uh, you know, sooner if we get it. We want to build a little time to be able to get it back from uh, the t-shirt maker. So there we go. Uh, hope you enjoyed our little look ahead to uh, the 2021 Baseball America season. I was doing a little research on where the term hot stove came from. I guess actually uh, it, it uh, derives from people gathering around a real hot stove in the middle of winter and uh, talking about baseball and longing for those, you know, warm summer days. Certainly, uh, I don't know what it's like where you're living, but we're in here in Denver. It's uh, like 15 degrees right now, headed down to two below zero in the next couple of days. So the hot stove was kind of a welcome respite for us. Hopefully it was for you as well, wherever you're watching from. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. Uh, Monday, President's Day, uh, we, will, we, we were trying to decide what we want to do for that. Um, Jack Christensen uh, up in uh, uh, Portage, Wisconsin. Uh, messaged me this morning and, and suggested we do a, uh, a, a president's uh, golf card set. Because, uh, you know, a lot of presidents, in fact, I think pretty much every president golfs. Um, so he suggested making like a, a set of uh, presidential golfer cards. And uh, we could, you know, have like a little round, a little turn, a little mini tournament, maybe a nine hole tournament with, say, eight or nine presidents uh, on President's Day. That'd be kind of cool. Played at the, uh, the Washington, the, what's the course in Washington? I forget the name of the course. Uh, I think it's Avalon Farms, uh, or maybe the federal. The federal course would be would be good. We'll pick a, an appropriate Washington D.C. area course and put the presidents on the uh, on the uh, uh, on the course, and we'll uh, do a little mini tournament of some kind for President's Day for our Monday broadcast. Till then, enjoy your weekend. Uh, stay warm, stay safe, stay well. And uh, enjoy your, 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 your time with your family and uh, hopefully maybe squeeze in a little game time as well. We certainly do appreciate you being part of the Play Games community. And we will see you Monday night. <laughs>